Welcome to Precision Agriculture in the Southeast. With me today is Dr. John Fulton, our Auburn University Precision Ag Specialist, our Extension Agronomy Team Leader, our Alpha Eminent Scholar, and all kind of good stuff. We're, we're thankful to have you with us today, John. Uh, last In our last lesson, we talked about yield monitoring, and today you're going to tell us about yield mapping. So we go from how it's done to what you do with it. So we encourage every everyone to go and really focus on the, the yield monitoring. We, we talked about cotton and really focused in on grain and how, how we're measuring things on those harvesters to come up with a yield measurement. Now is the, is the key, is really to trying to make money out of this is we generate these maps. And so we look at that picture here on the, on the first slide and we're trying to take what we see out there in, the, in, the, as in our crop and all of a sudden paint these pictures that represent how the yield varies across. And so it's really a key uh, layer when we talk about site-specific management. It's an enabling data layer. And we talk about how important it is to have the farmer knowledge as a data layer as we, as we develop or as a farmer develops their precision ag program. But secondly, all of a sudden the yield, because it was really not only the report card, but it gives us that data set to, to look at the yield variability and more importantly, where am I making money potentially and where am I losing money and what can I do, especially if I'm losing money, to, to make some decisions to improve the profitability in those areas. John, to me, the maps, the data is overwhelming. It, it's just too much stuff, but I can look at a map, or a farmer can look at the map and it shows his, his sweet spots and his sour spots and, and how he's doing in broad strokes without being overwhelmed. So we talked about that in the yield monitoring. You were concerned that you didn't want to see all that data. It's just too much. It's too much. But when we talk about visualizing data, yes. come up with a map, all of a sudden some things will start to click. Ah, yeah. oh, you know, I know why that happened. Or, hey, I need to go out there and maybe, maybe look at this a little bit more. Why, why am I getting low yields? So with that, just as a refresher, a yield map can tell us a lot of things. You know, on the forefront, a lot of folks quickly recognize some drainage issues but you know it can be used for a lot of things as we talked about in the yield monitoring uh, section but then today the uh, it is a map and so it doesn't tell us why maybe things are, are occurring right. or why the yield is as a but it gives us gives us the response that hopefully we can do some of our own either analysis and can act on that and improve our profitability uh, not only for the field, but maybe in, within the field, inc improve the profitability in some areas. So the key uses, we talked about this again, but just to highlight, uh, really there's a lot of uses, it's infinite, uh, but diagnosing crop production problems, really understanding the yield potential out there in the field, those are really going to be critical as we move forward and from an environmental standpoint, only making sure that we're applying what we need uh, to the crop but it ultimately it can give us a, the yield potential for that field and we can manage to that. Even doing some of the variable rate strategies, we might be able to, to, to really uh, manage to that yield potential. And finally, we encourage all of our farmers, once they have some of these tools, uh, space the yield monitoring to generate yield maps, that we can do some on-farm research. What works for me, what, you know, what kind of impact can it have on my operation? And, and that's really a key thing today is to do some on-farm research to see how products or practices are influencing and might be the thing that I need to be investigating or in, investing in some cases to further my operation into the future. John, one thing I think about is working with your landlords. You could give them that map <clears throat> and say, hey, we've got a bad spot here or, or maybe I need a 10-year lease because i got to fix this problem. And it's a communication tool, not just for your understanding, but for, for working with the ag professional. You know, when your consultant comes, I got that problem. What do we need to do with that, Bill? What? Yeah, there's been, uh, we've worked in, uh, we've, we've been very lucky as a team to work with some uh, very progressive producers. And that's one of the things they say, you know, from a lease perspective, all of them are leasing land today, but I can really have a better relationship with my landlord. So there's a, there's a really a key ingredient there is having those yes. yield maps and showing. The other thing of interest that a lot of is, is if I've got like soil types and and start to collect yield data 
on my farm, all of a sudden I can be looking at leasing another farm and how looking at how much would it be worth. How much can I afford knowing the soils? I can get the soil maps and, and some information from that I hadn't farm. Thought of that. And I can transpose or basically take some of my data and say, this is what we could do and kind of negotiate what the real price I'm willing to give for a rental agreement. Yeah. I so there's some, some real value in just uh, the yield monitors beyond what we had put on the screen there. So just remember, this is what you didn't want to see, Mark, is all this data. I mean, we're trying to turn that around to these maps. We're looking at the, the good areas, the bad areas, and, and so, you know, how's my irrigated versus non-irrigated? But again, all we're looking is yield variability and, and trying to act on that and learn from it and uh, change things as we go along to, to retain profitability. A little bit about patterns, you know, Mark, if you see a straight line, hopefully you're thinking that's either a driveway or that's a man-made travel mm -hmm. path across there. So we got to kind of keep that in mind. It's really these irregular patterns that we want to look at and see what we can manage and, and do about that. So in this field, we knew we had some issues with weeds over in the one area. So that's something we probably need to focus on next year when we get the sprayer out and, and, and start running on our pre- and post-type uh, programs. So again, there's straight lines that's man-made, but the irregular patterns is really what we want to focus on, so just keep those those in mind. There's many causes of variability, Mark. I mean, you can probably go back mm -hmm. in your career and we can talk about anything that, you know, just all the developments and products and things that we've tried over the years. But so there's a lot of causes. Uh, we don't determine the cause with the yield maps, but they do expose that cause and we can, again, act upon it. All we're getting is the location and we get the magnitude, hopefully, of the difference between a high yield or low yield or how much, uh, you know, adjacent areas might be yielding against each other. So ultimately, what we're trying to drive to is these improved management decisions at the farm level. So when we talk about yield variability, just something to think about on the front end. What can I manage? Okay, what can I change? So fertility, seeding or what I would call about any of my crop inputs, I can change, right? And then there's these attributes that we can only manage. So soil physical properties, we've got terrain, we might have other things out there. We can manage, but we're not gonna really change them. That's a long-term change, right, as we look at it. So there's things that we can change, and then there's the variability that we're gonna to have to, to manage around. So just keep that in mind that as we, as you build your programs or if you trying to build a service around that. These are two areas. They're managing on one end, but we can change things on the other end. So prescribing spatial inputs, um, just remember, and I'm just throwing this question out because we talk about how important yield maps are to a lot of the services. And what a lot of these services are looking at is trying to help you build nutrient management plans. Prescription maps is mm -hmm. the easy entry level. But as they develop these models, you know, isn't crop yield potential really the important ingredient there? If I know what that is or have a good handle uh, given a particular season of what the yield potential is, all of a sudden we can manage that. And so that's what a lot of these services are building is trying these models. It's the yield potential that they're really trying to drive down to and understand how that variability looks out in that field given different growing seasons. Um, we can develop seeding maps, verberate seeding maps, corn, but I think at the end of the day, we want to know what the yield variation is there if we're really going to take time and derive prescription maps to do verberate seeding. And we've got several case studies of farmers in this state that are doing verberate seeding of corn. It's taken several years, but what they'll tell you is yield maps is one of the most important and critical data layers to help them. So we need yield maps to, to do all this. Again, we've got a lot of services that are rolling out from companies and yield data will be the first thing they ask or yield maps. We talked about errors in yield monitoring uh, section. How do we correct those? Okay, I'm just going to go through some of these. A lot of the, the farm management information systems or ag GIS was the terminology I was using, have ways to kind of eliminate these errors or correct those errors. So be aware of that. If you're buying or if someone's helping you with your yield data, I would really ask them if they have the capabilities to yeah. get some of these errors. 
we've seen you know quite a bit of difference. It could change your decision in some areas just because of some of the errors. Getting rid of those errors, you kind of drive to what the real yield variability is and, and can make the right decisions. John, that goes back to what you've said several times during the course. It's who you're working with. Absolutely. I mean, who that person on the ground is really is almost as important as what brand you choose. You've got to have good uh, support. Support and, and the capabilities to do some of the detailed work that's required mm -hmm. uh, with these data sets. So we've already uh, talked about this, uh, but the solutions is try to remove as much of that erroneous data as possible prior to doing any type of analysis. Most of the farm management information systems or software packages out there have some ways to help you make this an easy task, or most of the service providers should have that in-house. So if I'm asking you to help me uh, manage and develop, and I'm giving you yield data, you know, let's, let's make sure that we can clean up some of these yield maps. Okay, there is a free version and it'll be uh, some of the information, I'll go over it quick, but there is a yield editor developed by the guys out in Missouri, USDA, ARS, uh, that can help you very quickly do some, some of this, uh, but it takes time, and so, uh, but, there, but it is out there. So, going back, we're measuring things, Mark. We're measuring mass flow on that grain combine. We're measuring moisture content. Most of these moisture meters are very accurate between 10 and 30 to 33 percent. So all of a sudden, if I get a moisture measurement at 38 percent, I don't have confidence that that's really 38 percent. So, you Just, need to get out of the field no, and fix that. <laughs> shouldn't be in the field, first of all, yeah. probably. But just think about it. There's limitations on any sensors. Yes. And just keep that in mind. And so distance or speed, you know, what's the minimum harvest speed and what's the, the maximum? I think anyone could tell you that it'd be hard-pressed to, to be harvesting at eight to nine miles an hour. So all of a sudden, if we see large distances occurring, suggesting large speed, we might have an issue uh, with that, whatever's measuring the speed, okay? So just keep those things in mind. Cut width, we wanna make sure that's as accurate. We talked about that, that can influence yield dramatically. Uh, but those three first, those first three ones are really what we're measuring constantly. Every second we're getting a measurement and an estimate of those, so think about that. We got GPS, you lose your differential correction mark, we talked about that, it could be somewhere a meter to 20 meters off. So, you know, we want that true. Today, most of the GPS receivers do an excellent job of, of not losing differential correction or really minimizing errors. So that is not a, a problem or what we see as a problem today as we once did back in, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And then there's always operator error. And I hate to bring that up, Mark, but we all operate a little differently, but if we're not dealing with the cut width, we're not paying attention, you know, the old old saying, there's drivers and there's operators. And it's the end of day versus morning, and there's that pushing it. I mean, some some years in corn harvest, man, they just, you work so many hours that mistakes are going to happen. Yeah. And so all, all I'll say is a lot of people like to go into their yield data, and let's take grain and corn. I've got 500 bushel, and I've got... I'm just going to throw out anything above 400 bushel, and I'm going to throw out all my zeros. Well, I get a little bit of antsy because we do have some fields that yeah. have zero. It's just drought or we get excessive rain and we get zero. We want to know that. Yeah. Um, and most of the time, it's not that it's 500 bushel. It's the fact that I moved a little distance, but I got a high mass flow rate, and I got that. It's not that it's the yield's wrong, but it's the mass flow or the distance measurement was wrong. So why not focus on getting those, making sure all that is right and not worrying so much about the yield. And so we just- John, I've seen a lot of zero and I haven't seen any 500. No. So just think about using your, what's being measured and focus on those measurements and the limitations on those. Hey, here's the lag time. We talked about that. Mark, mm -hmm. who's uh, from one of our farms, and we didn't have the lag time. And all of a sudden, when you start or when you come out on a Jason, all of a sudden those data points aren't lining up. You know, we don't want to see this. And so, again, as an operator, this is something I need to set in my, to, to say, when, do, when should this data recording stop? Because you might put your head down five foot from when I, 
uh, doing corn, for example. For me, I put my head down, start to put it down right when I hit the edge of the uh, stalks. And so there's a difference there, and I can adjust that. If you don't adjust it right, this is what occurs, and we know that's not quite correct. Logging data when I'm turning around, all of a sudden I get a lot of reds occurring out in the field. Can I clean some of that up? Because, again, that's going to affect how the yield map looks on the end. So, you know, is your header height and uh, up and down set properly or you got someone that's helping you out and they're just keeping the header mm -hmm. down you know we, we've got to get rid of some of this to clean it up and we've already, we'll show you some maps uh, where this occurs okay correcting yield data you know the, the big biggest thing I tell most people especially if you're in the data services just generate the yield maps for a producer look at them and I mean I think you'll very quickly yeah. see hey there's some things we need to clean up real quick before we put this into some kind of analysis or start deriving information from it okay we can filter or delete those erroneous data again most of the you know farm works uh, ag leaders SMS they've got some filtering and capabilities that can really help you but most service providers if you're if you're getting someone to help you with that should be able to help you get those rain and say let's get them out of there so what we're working with is true and the best of our knowledge the right representation of the field typically for grain yield monitors I'll make this comment from this is many processed and a lot of yield data over the years the distance and moisture content will clean up most of those yield maps okay I'm going down and all of a sudden I got an issue I pull back on my we'll pull back on my hydrostat well, my distance went down to hardly just a few inches, but yet I still got yeah. grain coming up there. Yeah. So guess what? Spikes. 500 bushel. Yeah. You know, so this is the kind of thing I can get rid of that. Um, and most of the time in, in, our, in our examples, you're going to delete less than 10% of the data points out there. And so you're not really changing anything. If you're not, our rule of thumb is you're deleting a lot more than 10%, there's a problem on the harvester themselves. Um, Sorry about that. Um, but there's a, something you probably need to look into on the yield monitor or the harvester itself if you start to get in high, high percentage of deleting data. So that's just a, a good rule of thumb. Let's get down and, and talk about yield maps. We're trying to generate knowledge. You know, we've already been through all this. I really like, you know, a lot of these are just some pretty obvious looking at seed varieties, looking at seeding rates. The timing of fertilizer, if I'm trying to do multiple applications of nitrogen versus how I traditionally do it in a single or uh, split, you know, the rates of nitrogen, any of these type of things, we can use yield monitors. How about strip tillage? A lot of guys are interested in strip tillage, but what does that mean to me and some other practices? And so there's a lot of things out there. But the interesting thing is, you know, we can do split planter stuff today. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a 12 row planter, six row uh, header, and I can split that planter with A and B, harvest it separately, and very quickly have some good replicated answers for my farm about what that might mean. And then finally, change rates, which each pass, you know, I can come out with, you know, change the rate uh, with each pass and just look at, do I get a response? So a lot of things are you can do, but at the end of the day, that yield map can verify if a response exists or not. And it's more knowledge in, in my pocket that I can use for the future. Just some area, I think this is from the Glen Farms up, up, up north. Just an idea that here, you know, we see some differences as crops change, but for the most part, you see the spatial trends are very similar. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, I've got high yielding in some areas, I've got some low yielding. And as you know, they've really capitalized and started to do verberate M, P, and K on a lot of this and lime, okay? Well, I like, I like that, John, showing on the different crops, your sweet spot is a sweet spot, whether you're working corn, soybeans, wheat, cotton, whatever, and your bad spot. So where are you going to focus, Mark? Yeah. Where are you going to focus? Oh, uh, good ground makes good money. Absolutely. And so it's a business. Here's, a, here's an example of, of yield maps that basically confirm we had some pH issues occurring on the right side of that field but after we got those corrected and we came back with our, our uh, subsequent wheat crop look how much nicer on the right all of a sudden we went from a red to a green and so again site-specific management. John looking at that map is that a, a turnaround 
uh, or is it shading effect? I'll, you know, we got the rim of red. Could that be shading effect from from trees or uh, other issues, or is it a, a turnaround? So you could have a shading effect, no doubt about it. We know that exists. Um, in this case, there's a turn in, in some of those areas that you're seeing red around the periphery is, is some turning, okay? Yeah. So again, that was going back to what we had talked about prior. Maybe some of those need to be removed mm -hmm. to better represent uh, reality, but it could be a shading effect. We yeah. don't want to remove them if that's, if that's reality. So saying it's zeros or anything below mm -hmm. 10, uh, I'm not comfortable with that, you know, because those might be real numbers that we want to yeah. uh, keep. But, but no, you know, we wouldn't have known the in impact of getting our pH right if we didn't have a yield map. And I can quantify that today. I can pencil out what that meant to my pocketbook, Mark, by making that simple adjustment of getting out and doing verberate lime and correcting that was a tremendous impact on uh, profitability. Some other things that we can take yield maps and do, it can do a lot more. These is, This is not all inclusive, but we got crop moisture. Okay, so we're trying to open up fields. What's my moisture? I can take a, take a run across the field and kind of get a glimpse of how much variability there is in moisture and, and make that decision whether I want to harvest or not. Or as I load out and I kind of keep it in mind what my moisture content is and what I might need to be doing uh, at my grain bin system, you know, those type of things. I think the real key in what we're trying to promote is profit maps. Yield maps are, are wonderful mm -hmm. tools, but the profit maps yeah. get down to maybe I need to be making something different, a decision differently in a field. You know, I can look at operator behavior. What's my field efficiency? How many acres per hour can I get out of that machine? And it's very interesting. You get multiple machines running, Mark. And looking at this efficiency and what a machine can cover in a day, you would be amazed how much operators can vary. And so are they doing a good job or are they doing a bad job? Those are some of the things that you can pull out of this data and not have to be necessary at the field. You can do that post-processing. Other things, I, th th we got markers or flags capabilities built in. I can mark issues out in the field, weed areas. Uh, I might have had emergence issues sometimes, and I'll show an example of that. I can mark whatever I want out there. I can mark something, and, you know, if I'm working for you, Mark, I can mark and say, I think you need to go back out and look right here. There's something not wrong. We didn't get any, you know, anything emerging. There's something seems to be occurring, or, hey, we got excessive weed. It's back in the back corner. It's not easy to see, but it's right here to go back. And so we can collect all that while we're, while we're out harvesting. Here's an example that we collected. Um, this is a yield map, and we and basically the the shaded purple areas is where weeds impacted not only yield but emergence. Mark in that lower yeah. right corner, we had basically nothing out there to harvest, uh, very little. And the other interesting thing that we could that we can notice is number one, we have a weed issue that I think next year better focus on because it had a dramatic impact. But the interesting thing, we had a young man that, that was operating a planter for the first time. He started on the bottom uh, of that field and made his way up towards the, the north side of it. But when he got up to about two-thirds, you'll see he changed directions. And all of a sudden, a lot of short rows in that top left corner of that field, back and forth, a lot of turning. And I'll tell you, actually, I was the one harvesting this field. I did more time turning than I did harvesting just because as a, a young person not knowing the field that they made a decision to start planting basically perpendicular to the way mm -hmm. they were doing and all of a sudden the efficiency went way, way down. down. But a very good teaching moment that, I could, that we could get out of this yield data and show, listen, let's next year start here and let's keep all of our rows parallel. And so, again, just some things more than yield that we can pull out and start to, to look at look at things. Profit maps, man, this is this is really where, where we want guys looking. You can see at the bottom, um, but basically we can look at profit based on the yield. We can know our gross income minus our cost. If we got a good estimate, we can plug those in. And most of these ag GIS or farm management information systems, you can do this very quickly. You just put in your cost and it'll pop this out for you. And you can see like normal along the edges of the field, a lot of time we're not making money. Can I do something different there? Uh, 
do I have some shading? Maybe I mm -hmm. can maybe do some um, pruning. pruning or just get rid of the fence line per se where the trees are growing. Maybe I can remove it from production, Mark. Maybe I can enroll it in yeah. a buffer strip if it's long as string. These are the kinds of things that we can also take something that's non-profitable and turn it to being profitable. So I just want to mention this before we end. I've mentioned, we've talked about this multiple times. There's a lot of precision ag services out there today, Mark, that are really not only are existent, but are starting to roll out and guess what they want, what data, data layer they want. Profit. Profit and they want your yield maps to help yeah. them better serve you. They want to understand your growing yeah. environment. They got to have yield maps in order to establish that. What's your yield potential? These services are helping you organize and view your precision ag data. A lot of times they're bringing an agronomy aspect and kind of being that agronomy consultant, but building that spatial or site-specific management programs that we've seen in some of the earlier maps in this session. But all these services are rolled out. You can go out today and not all these are available today in, in Alabama. I'm just saying all of our input suppliers, we've got field uh, or um, seed um, Pioneer, DuPont Pioneer has their field 360 that they're storing around. We've got Monsanto and their field scripts. We've got Helena, uh, Agri AFC, CPS, all rolling out services to help manage data mm -hmm. but to drive information back to the farmer to make changes and they want yield data. They will tell you that's probably number one on their priority. And so just keep that in mind that this yield map is really an important key uh, and I think that's why we've seen a real, not only that the yield monitors are coming on the harvesters as standard today, but the fact that the, uh, farmers wanting to sign up recognize, hey, I need yield maps that will allow them to, to give me the service that I expect. So on a so at the end, I uh, can't emphasize that yield mapping is such a critical data layer, especially when we start talking about these precision ag programs or site-specific management. Calibration of your yield monitors is critical. We know that map errors, but we were talking about quality at the end of the last session. Quality is what all those services want. They need to be able to, to filter or get some of that erroneous data out and use that to make some information back or generate information for the farmer to help them grow in their, in their precision ag program. Thank you, John. One, one thing I thought of uh, as you were talking, operators, you know, if you got a good operator, he's, worth, he's probably worth more than you're paying him. You need to keep him. I mean, and, and this, this is one way to document how good a job your employees are doing. Absolutely. You know, they say this or say that, but boy, you got hard proof uh, about what's happening in the field. And when we're talking about timing of operations, whether that's planting, or oh, in this yes. case, we're focused on harvesting, you could see even in our one example that the guy planting really influenced our field capacity because we had to go out and spray, and all of a sudden we're making a lot of turns with our sprayer, making a lot of turns with our harvester, and that had a profound influence on how much we were making in that area of the field. Just that one little decision. You know, these maps are like an Ag Agatha Christie book. Who done it? What what happened? I mean, we got you got a dead spot. Somebody died. Why? Who did it? How can we fix that? Yeah. And so, hey, thank you, John. It's been a, a good lesson, and hope we'll tune in next time.